are on lesson number 12, and lesson number 12 is titled Confess, and this lesson is based on principle 4 and step 5, and step 5 is we admit it to God, to ourselves, and to another human being, you know, not your dog, not your cat, not the television set, but a, another human being, the exact nature of your wrongs. And the biblical comparison there is James 5.16, and that is, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Okay? Now, step five is like the beginning of getting to the truth. And step five is the beginning of where we start to practice the principle of integrity in our lives. Step five also requires us to be carefully honest with ourselves. And for some of us, we've never ever done that. In step five, we begin to find that the problem that we admitted to in step one, you know, that thing that we have that a tendency to do a lot, you know, that's wrong, that, that thing is really being driven by a whole collection of character defects, which have been growing under the surface in our lives. A lot of us have <clears> been <throat> carrying this around for a long time. So we have to identify those defects. We have to make an inventory. And we have to list them down. And we need to admit to them. And we need to own up to them. We really need to own up. We really need to take responsibility for our, our own pride and our anger. We need to take responsibility for our own jealousy, and our lust, and our greed. We need to take responsibility for our laziness. We need to take responsibility for the excess in our lives, right? We need to take responsibility for running up our credit cards and eating really bad food. You know, we need to take responsibility for that. See, step five is a critical point in this process. It's a critical point in this program. You know, we need another human being to come alongside of us. You know? And, and that person needs to be someone that we trust and that who will be honest with us. Sometimes that's, those people are slim pickings. You know, we, we need to have someone get next to us before we you know, we give up and we go back into our denial. See, in a way, step five says that you can only grow so far alone. This is the first time that we require anybody to come in to help us out here. So we get to a point that continuous growth and healing, is, it's, it's required that we have some assistance. You know, somebody else. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. That's what we're going to talk about. We're at this critical juncture in the program. You know, we're at a point where we're, we're, we're being asked to come clean and to tell another human being the truth about who we really are. And how do we do that? Well, hopefully this acrostic tonight will give you some insight to that. And the, the first letter on the acrostic is C, and that is confess your shortcomings, resentments, and sins. Another, you know, coming clean would also fit in there, too. You want to write that down? Come clean? Because that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to come clean and admit that our wrongs are wrong. Right? We need to own up to these things and discover that, that, that we've discovered in our inventories. The Bible says this. It says, He who conceals his sins does not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces them Finds mercy. If, you're, if you were to look the word up, confess, in the dictionary, you, you, this is what it says. It says, to tell or make known as something wrong or damaging to oneself. But confession is necessary. So some of us have built this barrier, uh, you know, of us and God. And, and the first thing, the first step is to confess to God, to remove that barrier. The next letter on the handout is O, and that is for obey God's direction. 
See, step five really sums up how to obey God's direction in confessing our crap. Right? First, we confess or admit our faults to ourselves, then to God, and then to someone else we trust. The Bible says this, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The next letter is N, and that is for no more guilt. No more guilt. See, step five can restore our relationships. It, can, it also can restore our confidence. You know, it allows us to, to move from that rearview mirror way of thinking, or uh, looking at life, you know, looking back, you know, second-guessing ourselves, second-guessing other people. There's three things I want you to remember, and actually you can write this on the back side of your handout or whatever. Three things. I want you to remember God's kindness. In Romans 8.1 it says, Therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. You know, he's not out to punish us. He loves us. The second thing I want you to remember is God's faithfulness. God says, I will never leave you. I will never abandon you. It's good news. See, others may give up on you, right? They may walk out the door. But God says, I'll never leave you. I'll, I'll never abandon you. I will never give up on you. I'll never be ashamed of you. Third thing I want you to remember is God's promises. In Ezekiel 36, 26, it says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. So we need to take courage in that. You know, God's at work within us. You know, he's already started the process. He already sees us with pure hearts. You know, step five is the process of becoming who we are in God's eyes. We don't have to be afraid. So, if